Okay, we are presented with a bank statement and the first question states how many days does this statement cover? So we have to look at the statement and we can see right at the top here to give us the period. And let's look at the period there. It is 29th August right, to 28th November. So let's break this down in terms of its months. So we know that August will leave us with 29, 30 and 31st. So that will be three days. Then we know that September would follow and September would be 30 days. Then we have October. October would be 31 days. And lastly, we have November, which is given as 28 days. We add this up here. We come to 92 days. Okay, 1.2, we have how many statements did Mr. Jacob receive for this account? So this is fairly easy. We look at the information given at the top there and we see that it's this portion here where it says statement number 13. So therefore we know that he received 13 statements. So 1.3, what is the monthly account? fee payable on this account. So now we look closer at the statement and we can find here, we look at a description given to us where it says monthly account fee and the amount given there would be 12 Rand 50. One point four, what is the monthly deposit for October? So remember the keyword there is October because this statement presents a couple of months so we need to focus on the month of october so if we look at the month of october and we look at cash deposits if you look at the word cash deposit you'll find it given to us there's one cash deposit there and then there's another cash deposit over here within the month of october and the amounts we'll take is the amounts right at the end which is our fees and there it says here bank charges so let's write that down so we would say it would be 560 plus our 14 rand given to us and so therefore the bank charges will be 19 rand 60 1.5 calculate the bank charges for the month of October so if you look at the month of October we see that there are three bank charges given here towards the ending of October additional to the bank charges that we normally get at the sides where it's indicated by this heading here so you must also be familiar familiar with the description of certain um, bank charges for instance in this case it's monthly account fee uh, service fee and cash deposit fee those are additional bank charges which you must familiarize yourself with so let's write our answer now we have 12 and 50 that's given to us there I'm looking at these totals here and that area there so it's 12 and 50 the other one is 13 rand 10 cents and lastly we have 19 rand 60 so the additional bank charges would be 45 Rand and 20 cents. So 1.6, if Mr. Jacob had to make a deposit of 3545, calculate the deposit fee for this amount. So what we need to do is look at the additional table here. If you look at the additional table, we have a column for deposits. And looking at the first column, right we have cash deposits at the FNB ATM and there is a amount in which we are guided by or a statement in which we are guided by it says 70 cents per hundred so the amount that we're dealing with is three five four five so this is basically made up of three thousand five hundred and forty five Rand but to the bank now it will be considered as 3500 here and this will actually be another hundred 
So you have to do your calculations in terms of 36 sets of hundreds. So it would be 36 times our 70 cents. And the answer would be 25 rand, 20 cents. How much money was deposited by Mr. Jacob into the account for the time period of this statement? So all we need to do is look at the deposits and we look, we guided by the statements on the side. You'll see there's one year, right? We continue further down. You'll see there's another one cash deposit here. Don't get mixed up between cash deposit fee and cash deposit. This is the deposit, actual deposits. So, and there's one further down here. So we have three that are indicated. So we need to look at those amounts. So looking at those amounts, you see the first one would be 800 rand. Uh, second one is given as 2000 rand. Third one is 1000 rand. So his total deposit would be 3,800 Rand. Okay, 1.8 show by calculations how 11 Rand 25 VAT was calculated. So if you had a look at the statement, you see towards the bottom there, we were given this information here. It says total VAT included in the statement of 11 Rand 25. Additional to that, we've given other statement here where it says the VAT is calculated at 14%. Now remember, currently your VAT is 15%, right? But for exercise purposes, we are just using the 14%. But currently, please, I stress that VAT is 15%. So for this particular exercise, we will be using 14%, okay? So where do we get the amount from? Now remember, this VAT will be charged on additional charges in which we are charged. So what they've done is the statement gives us right at the top there, it gives us the bank statement and it gives us the bank charges, which is 9160. So that's the one that we, which we will charge our VAT on. So all we need to do is find 14% times the 9160. And our VAT will be 11 rand. 25. So 1.9 will be given a series of transactions to which Mr. Jacob has done and uh, we need to calculate using the table that you see on the right. So the first one states that it is a cash withdrawal of 600 Rand. Now remember it's times 2 so we need to look at the cash withdrawals. So it's at an ATM so there's our heading here for cash withdrawals. And then there's our ATM here. This is what we have to look at, right? So once we have this, we look at the side here and it tells us what we need to do. So let's write that down. So the first one is, it'll be 395 plus 130 per 100. So we need to multiply this now. So it's 130 per 100, the amount is 600. Right, so it will be times 6. Now remember, it's 2 transactions, so the entire thing must be multiplied by 2. It says 2 transactions right at the top. Right, you notice it here, 2 transactions. So when we do our calculations, we arrive at an amount of 23 rand 50. Right, that's just the first part. So the second part we need to do. So the second part is stating that there's a one deposit of 900 Rand at an FNB ATM. So let's look at the FNB ATM. Okay, and it is a deposit. So let's go to our deposits. There's our deposits here. All right, and FNB ATM would be the one just below that. Let's look at the amount. The amount would be 70 cents per 100. All right, so let's indicate that. So the second part would be 900 Rand. So it would be nine times 70 cents because there's nine hundreds in 900 rand and that amount would be six rand 30. Okay, so the third part now, third part says one deposit of 2,500 rand in the bank. So let's still look at deposits. 
Okay. Still under deposits. Let's look at in the bank means at the branch. See cash deposit at FNB branch and let's go to what it says. It says 165 per 100. Now similarly with the 900. So it will be 165 times and there's 25 hundreds in 2500 rand. And that amount would be 41 rand and 25 cents. So now they want to know the total of this transaction. So therefore, we add these amounts up. 23.50 plus 6 rand 30 plus 41.25. And we arrive at a total amount of 71 rand 5 cents. Okay, so Mr. Jacobs wants to make a withdrawal of 1,200 Rand. He has the option to withdraw the amount from an FNB ATM or to use another bank's ATM. Show with calculation which would be a cheaper option. Okay, so basically we have to look at the two types here. Okay, so the first type under withdrawals, there's withdrawals there. We have the FNB ATM and thereafter below that we have other banks ATM so let's look at the first option which is the FNB ATM okay directly in line with that you'll see on the right hand side it's telling us it's 3 Rand 95 plus 130 per 100 Rand so 130 per 100 Rand means for every 100 Rand is 130 so they are 12 hundreds in 1200 rand and so our amount would be 19 rand 55 cents thereafter we look at other bank of ATMs okay on the right hand side they tell us what to do for the charges so it gives us on the right hand side 6 rand 50 plus it states FNB ATM fee. So the FNB ATM fee is, as we mentioned above, is 3 Rand 95 plus 1 Rand 30 times 12. Right, and that would give us 26 Rand and 5 cents. So clearly we can see the FNB ATM is the cheaper option. Please don't forget the concluding statement because learners tend to forget this. Okay, give a reason why it may not be suitable to use this account as a savings account. So there's just two things we can highlight here. Firstly, there is no interest, right? There's no interest for a credit balance. All right, you can expand on this. I'm just highlighting some things we could speak of and you can expand on it. The second thing is if you look at the statement, you'll notice that on the statement, they've got something called monthly account fee, which is 1250. So basically what this does is this monthly fee, like it will reduce the amount. So it reduces the amount irrespective of whether there's any transaction or not. It will still reduce the amount because he has to pay this monthly fee. Okay, give a reason why it costs more to make a deposit in the bank as compared to using the FNB ATM. So basically, in a nutshell, you can just say it prevents overcrowding inside the bank. Right. So the better and faster way is to use the ATM so that inside the bank doesn't get crowded. So they charge a higher fee for doing transactions in the bank than at the ATM. Okay, the client used his cash withdrawal amounts to pay for his weekly expenses for airtime, petrol, meals and purchasing groceries. Suggest two cost effective ways that you could use to save on cash withdrawal fees. So two options he could use is one he could use his bank card right to make his purchases right 
instead of taking out the money and then paying, he could just use his bank card directly. And the second one would be to make a once-off withdrawal. So he just gets charged once and the rest of the money he can use it to pay all his necessary expenses.